Okay, we have Jacob here, and he is ready for questions. Who would like to lead us off? We'll start here on the left, third row. Hey, Jacob. Uh, Billy Jones, KCU 88.1 FM, Columbia. I'm curious, the last two years, two defensive coordinators for the Missouri Tigers really has not mattered for you guys offensively. Uh, you've been able to tear them apart defensively. What has it been uh, the past two years that's allowed you guys to have such success offensively against Missouri? I mean, man, just approaching every single day um, the same way, right? And I think that that's truly our mission is just to go into every week and treat it just how it is, right? It's a game week and it's time to go perform. Um, nothing specific, I guess, against Missouri that, you know, we score a lot of points. It's just that we go out there and we have success and um, just better than them on that day. So. Left side, second row, and then pass your mic down. Hey, Jacob, Ben Bobick, Local 3 News in Chattanooga. You've been at Tennessee a year or two now. Yeah. You, you've been able to see Joe Milton come in, earn the starting role, mm -hmm. then obviously sit on, the, not, sit on the bench back up Hendon last year. What sure. if, how has his maturity been through that process, and, and how confident in you, are you guys in him heading into this season? Yeah, the one thing that um, I think built my respect for Joe the most was the fact that he, he stayed, man. He um, <clears throat> had every, maybe not every right, but everyone could understand why he would leave and um, want to go play because he's obviously a great talent and um, you know, a really big weapon for us. But the fact that he stayed and he just learned from, from Hendon and also helped Hendon out a lot in a lot of different areas of the game, um, has truly shown me that he's committed to this place. He's committed to, to being great here. Um, he really likes being here. He loves all the guys on the team. Um, and he'll tell you that too. Like he gets along super well with, with pretty much everybody on the team. So um, definitely super excited to see him take that leadership into this season and, and, and perform the way that we all know he can. Right side, second row. Yeah, Jacob, you're seen as one of the leaders here in the community and also on this football team as well. What does that mean for you to be seen that way by the community? And also, how has that been for you almost with a lot of these young people coming in now on the team, stepping into that role and uh, taking a major, ship, major leadership position moving forward? Yeah. Um, so whether it was just kind of because I've been here the longest, right, or whether I actually deserve it, right, did step into that leadership role a couple years ago. And um, I am looked at as, you know, kind of big, big bro to a lot of these younger guys. And, um, and man, it's helped me grow up a lot. I think that the, where I'm at now and where I was at, you know, just one, two years ago, um, personally, just the way that I carry myself, the way that I communicate with people, um, the way that I handle conflict, conflict, different things like that. <clears throat> um, I've truly seen a lot of development in myself. And I kind of just owe that to the coaches at Tennessee. And, and um, we do this thing called the program, right? It's leadership development. Um, but man, just kind of committing to that. And, and it's, been a, it's been a blessing, man. And I'm truly happy that I'm able to be here, obviously representing um, not just my team, not just the state, um, but our fans and, and myself and my family, um, truly been a blessing. Left side, second row. Jacob, Coach Heupel said upstairs that as good as last season was, yeah. you guys didn't accomplish your goal. Right. How much do you feel like there's unfinished business and what is the goal now moving forward? Um, so the goal, the goal will always be the same. The goal will be when the SCEs. Um, I think if you do that, that sets you up to go do everything you want, right? You get opportunity to go play in the SC Championship. You get opportunity, if you win that, to go play in the National Championship. Um, obviously, the cultural playoffs is going to look different here in the next few years. But um, if, if we do that, man, if we, if we win those games, then you know, you'd set yourself up for everything you want. And that's what he means when he says we didn't get the job done. Because, yeah, we had a great season, right? A lot of people um, outside the program would not have expected us to have won 11 games last year, go to New Year's Six Bowl, win the Orange Bowl. Um, maybe not nobody, but a lot of people weren't expecting that, right? So a lot of people from the outside would say, oh, that's a, that's a good job. Like, you guys probably reached all your goals. You probably did everything you were looking out to do. Um, it's just not the case, right? And of course, that's last year, and, and we've done a good job of resetting, but now the focus is on winning the SC East and, and doing everything we can to get ourselves in that position. Front row, right side. Hey, Jacob, uh, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Jacob, what was the feeling leading into the Alabama game, long yeah. drought in that series? And then is there any reason to believe there's an expanded role for the tight end in Josh Heupel's system? Yeah, um, man, like I said to him earlier, it's the same thought every single game. We go into the game expecting to win, expecting to you know, be able to operate and do everything that, that we plan to do, right? Whether that's um, you know, execute our run game, execute the pass game, stop them on defense, third and short, whatever it may be. 
Um, there's a game plan every single week, and it's about sticking to the game plan and about playing your best and playing your hardest. And that week, we were able to do it, and we were able to, to come out victorious. I think that um, does do us a lot of good now, thinking about that game and, and, and kind of going back to that. But, you know, you definitely look back and learn lessons from things like that. Um, now, as far as, you know, being a tight end in this offense, I think um, it takes a special special mind, a special person physically and mentally to be able to play tight end in this offense. Um, not because it's super hard, but just because we were asked a lot and when we're asked to do things that are kind of the central points of, of a lot of different plays, whether it's run blocks or, you know, a pass concept or something that we're relied on a lot to do things for other people within this offense. And um, that's something that myself and all my other tight ends in that group um, truly embrace and we enjoy the fact that we're looked at as, as the smart guys, right? And I'll use quotation. I, you couldn't see it because it was under the table. I use quotations uh, <laughs> as the smart guys, right? In the offense and, and we're kind of that missing piece is kind of what we like to say. Um, so we take a lot of pride in, in being able to do that and obviously, you know, love to get rewarded with, with some third down catches or, you know, some red zone touches and things like that. Front row. Uh, Chris Farble in KCU 80.9 FM in Columbia. Yep. Uh, you've been at Tennessee for several years now. And uh, I think go, go, going back when Josh Heupel was hired, when you we were going through the coaching transition, yep. and Heupel took over in a really tough spot for the program, I was going to ask, how did Heupel really turn this program around way quicker than many people expected? And also, what was your decision to stay with Tennessee even through, the, through that transition? Um, so I think the answer to both of the questions is just um, the culture. I think it's the culture of, uh, and that's kind of a buzzword. I don't like using that word. Um, my friendships on the team, right? How close we are with each other and just the fact that, man, we love competing with each other. And I think that when you love that guy next to you and you love the people that are leading you, we love Coach Hype, we love all of our coordinators, all of our position coaches, you'll do a lot for them and you'll, and you'll go the extra mile to make sure you're prepared to, you know, to go out and, and execute your assignment, right? Um, so I think that it kind of starts with that. That's how we've had so much success is that he came in, he changed the culture, he made it known that we are loved, we are respected, we are valued. Um, and we are really good football players at the same time. So, um, you know, you add all those things and you have a lot of success. Now, um, you know, my decision to stay, my decision to be here is the same answer, man. Like, we, I truly enjoy being around all my friends, all my teammates. Um, this university has, has given me a lot. Um, I have two degrees from the university now. So <clears throat> just that alone, having education, being able to set myself up for my future is super big, but also it's, it's allowed me to make connections and you know, build up my self-confidence, right? Like I just talked about earlier, the, the leader I've become, the man I've become has, has definitely been, um, you know, maybe not just because, but you know, this coaching staff and Coach Hype has had a lot to do with that. So. Last two questions first, right here. Second row. Yeah, we're talking about Coach Heifel and all the success that he's had in the yeah. last two seasons. Obviously, last year you had that amazing victory over Alabama as yeah. well. But then Georgia happened, and Georgia seems to be just as strong as they were last year as sure. well. Yeah. What is the feeling right now in that locker room in terms of what you guys need to be able to do in order to kind of overcome that last step and get to the playoffs and then maybe compete for a championship? Um, man, it sounds crazy, but the same thing we've been doing, man. The same thing we've been doing. Um, you got to go hard every day. You got to put in the extra work. You got to make sure that you're you're physically prepared, or also mentally prepared, right? This is this is a game that that is very taxing and very, um, you know, very demanding. Asks a lot of you um, in in every area of, of your life. And I think that going into this season, understanding that you know we should expect a win, right? We should expect a win every single every single week. And I think everyone around the country would say that, right? That's not just because of last year or because of where we're at now. I think everyone as a competitor goes into a game expecting to win the game. So I think that taking that mentality um, and adding it with just the preparation and everything that you know, we're looking forward to do um, should lead us into, into kind of where we want to be come season time when we may have to play those big games. Left side, third row. Vince Farrar, 99.1, the sports animal. Hey, Jake. What's up? Uh, the tight end position added a, uh, a newcomer that was oh, yeah. listed at tight end from London, Emmanuel Koya. I know it's early on, he came in late, but what, what have you seen and learned about him so far? Yeah, Emmanuel is um, one of the uh, most pure athletes I've ever seen in my life. Like, being completely real, the way he runs, the way he jumps, um, he cuts and moves, and everything about him is just super, super athletic, super twitchy. Um, a guy that <clears throat> has not been playing football for a very long time, so needs to kind of develop in the way of, um, you know, in football there's a kind of a different language you talk, right? And talking football is a lot different than talking English. And so these things that 
you know, he just doesn't quite understand maybe yet, but you know, we're trying to bring him along, trying to just teach him, hey, this is exactly what this means. Uh, when he does this, you do this, just different things like that, that he needs to develop a little bit more um, for him to be right where you want him. Jacob, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.